So flights are starting to get back to normal across the U.S. After what a delay this morning, an FAA computer system broke down. That's when they decided that all domestic flights needed to stay grounded for several hours while they sorted it out. That's more than 8,000 flights across the U.S. delayed. 1,200 actually canceled. Nearly 1,000 of those delays came from right here in Denver, out at DIA. Our 9 News aviation expert Greg Fife joins us now to break down what happened this morning. Greg, we know the entire system and all these systems run on computers what do you know so far as far as what crashed, what happened? Well, one of the things, Tom, that uh, the FAA said was that there was a glitch in the computer. Well, a glitch could account for anything, as you know, whether it's software, whether it's hardware, whether it's a human that's interfacing with both. So this glitch is going to, to really have to be investigated to figure out if it's because of antiquated software, antiquated hardware, or a combination of both. Any fear about this being a cyber attack or that someone had ill will and that's part of what happened? And where are the backups for something like this? I mean, they have to have a plan B, you'd think. Well, there are. And when you look at the redundancy that are built into the air traffic control system as a whole, this is one small part of the air traffic control system, but it's a vital part because it provides um, real-time essential information for flight crews, all pilots have access to NOTAMs, but for commercial operators, they need to have this real-time information because all of their flight planning is based on whether or not the airport's open or closed, whether a particular runway is open or closed, or even a piece of airspace if the president's traveling and they put up a temporary flight restriction. So it's all about routing. It's all about aircraft performance. It's essential information. They can still get it through the air traffic controllers, but it's a very cumbersome process. That's why this particular automated system is so essential. Yeah, there's obviously no margin for error. Everything has to be working at 100%. It has to be uh, real time like you talk about. So when this unravels as it did this morning, how do we put the toothpaste back in the tube? How hard is it to get the American domestic airlines back online and, and running again? The big thing is they are back online. It's the ripple effect, as we saw with Southwest over the holidays. The big thing is, is that it's all about time. And in this particular instance, we had a ground stop for about two hours. Had this ground stop lasted any longer, three, four, five hours, even a whole day, the system would have been disrupted probably for a week. They should have all of these aircraft and the airlines, as long as the weather holds out, should get back onto a, quote, normal schedule by sometime tomorrow where the ripple has now flattened out. Of course, we're coming off of all the news around Southwest Airlines in particular, but all the weather delays around the, the Christmas holiday and, and confidence in American air travel. I mean, do you I mean, obviously you are in American air travel. It's what you do and you travel quite a bit. Should the public be concerned about our system? Actually, the public should be uh, thrilled about the fact that safety is the first priority. That's why they put the ground stop in place. That's why they wanted to make sure that the system was back to where it should have been. It's a very robust system. Now, the shortcomings with the system will be ferreted out. Of course, Congress is now talking about having somebody answer up on the Hill. But again, it comes down to the FAA. It talks about uh, monetary resources and manpower resources. If they have to upgrade this equipment, that's going to take money. We've seen other parts of the air traffic system upgraded um, over a period of time. This could be one of those parts that they're going to talk about and then put money and manpower behind it so that these kinds of things don't happen in the future. Well, hopefully Congress gets involved because that smooths most everything over pretty quickly. So uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens well, with that. You know, the big thing, Tom, is that there are a lot of congressmen and senators who are pilots. They understand this. Yeah. And a number of them are on the transportation subcommittee. Uh, though they'll be holding hearings with the FAA for their reauthorization so that they understand the gravity of this situation. That could help the FAA. Yeah, anyone traveling this morning felt it as well. Greg, it's always good to talk with you. Thanks again for joining us today. Greg Feith, our 9 News aviation expert.